Well, hello and welcome back to The Daily Brew, the last daily brew here in Singapore. It's the devotional where every day we drink a new brew of coffee and we see what God is brewing for us in the Bible. Yes, it's cheesy, but it's true. Like I said, it is our last day here in Singapore, day 165 of our Bible reading journey, which means we have hit the milestone of 200 days not just to go in our year, but in our Bible reading plan as well. A massive congratulations to you if you have made it this far reading the Bible every single day. If you're joining us for the day one today and you've just clicked on this devotional journey, maybe you've been looking through it on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, you found this devotional journey, go back to day one, start from the start because this devotional builds on itself day after day after day. It's great to be here today. We're going to be trying for our last brew very shortly a vending machine coffee. I'll leave that there for you to try and ponder that as we have a look at what scriptures we're going to be reading today. They are in the descriptions on every platform as always. Psalm 73 verse 15 to 28, Acts chapter 9 verse 1 to 31, and 2 Samuel chapter 22 verse 1 to chapter 23 verse 7. So those are our coffees. I mean, (laughs) those are our scriptures that we're going to be reading today. I've got coffee on the brain because every day we've been uh there's a there's a vending machine that is available to us to make coffee and i look when someone says to me do you want vending machine coffee i i don't naturally jump to it and go yes that's a coffee that i'd like but today being the last day annalee suggested that i try it and so you know what we're gonna try it it is this coffee star fresh and natural genuine product (laughs) coffee because nothing says genuine coffee like when you literally called it genuine product. Uh, so this is an Americano. And what happens is you, you, you choose the coffee that you want. You push the button on the touch screen. The cup drops and then it fills up with the coffee that you've selected. There's a bunch of choices. Americano, flat white, mocha, blah, blah, blah. Or oh, actually no flat white, latte. Um, but we've gone with the long black because uh, the Americano because it's the closest thing that we could get to a long black. I'm going to try it today right here, right now in Singapore for the last time, the brew from the vending machine. Let's give it a go. You know what? That's actually not bad. You know, when someone says vending machine coffee, you get this picture of like dirty, greasy slime coffee. This is actually not bad. I would, I'm sad we haven't had this earlier because to be honest, that's one of the better cups of coffee we've had here. Uh, the best cups of coffee was at the church at the youth hangout zone. They've got a youth zone and they had a guy named Justin, I think his name was, behind the machine. I had two of those coffees because they were so incredibly good. Uh, then I've had a lot of Starbucks. But this right here, the Coffee Star, hey, genuine product. It's pretty good. Um, okay, so considering it's a vending machine, I want to be... I am, it's a good coffee. I think I'm gonna put it at a 5.3. I think 5.3 out of 10 is fair for the um, Coffee Star Fresh and Natural vending machine coffee. 5.3, very, very nice. There's, I don't know what that noise is outside. There's it's a creepy trolley lady probably offering me some more of this vending machine coffee. <laughs> uh, you probably didn't even hear that noise, but I did and it was uh, stressful. Anyway, let's move on to our Bible, the reason that we are here today. The Bible says this uh, in the psalm. In fact, the psalmist, he, he talks about how the uh, there's a slippery slope. He, he's describing how sin and living in sin is the sen- sense of being on a slippery slope. I don't know if you've ever felt this way before, but it's like nothing you can do can fix it. And you just keep slipping further and further away from the life that God has for us. But then we see this tension shift. We see that they enter the sanctuary of God and everything changes. There's nothing that compares to following Jesus, to walking with him in relationship. We don't always know what's going on in life, but we can, through the power of the Holy Spirit, always know who's going on the journey with us. God has this ability to, even when we're surrounded by what feels like never-ending pressure, to bring us into spacious places. The truth is, when you actually stop and silence your mind, when you truly realize what it is that God has saved you from, You realize that God is so very good to you and you find a spacious place in the presence of God. When you realize you've been in the presence of God all this time, you become refreshed in his goodness. You can't slip on a slippery slope if you stop. 
often you try and keep going in life and you try and work your way out of the issue or the danger and you keep on slipping and sliding. But if you stop and you just take a moment and you just let God show you which way to go and maybe even you let God pull you out of your sin and pull you out of the situation that you're in right now, you can find yourself getting off the slippery slope and into a spacious place. So maybe right now, wherever you are, just pause the devotional video and put a timer on for a few minutes. Sit, Just sit and let God speak to you. Sit in the, in the silence of his presence and let God direct your path. And I pray that as you do, you, you find the refreshing of his presence today. Today we see uh, also the origin story of a guy who makes arguably the biggest difference in scripture after God himself, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and maybe a few others, okay? We see the conversion of Saul to Paul. God, when he redeems and rescues you, also rescues those who you could have caused harm to. God doesn't just deliver Saul, but he also delivers the church who would have experienced his wrath and persecution. God transforms Saul from a persecutor of the church to an apostle of the church. He fills him with power, unction, discernment, and made him one of the best leaders the church has ever seen. Saul was a Roman citizen from a place called Tarsus. He was very well educated, and many people don't actually know this, but he was a qualified lawyer. He was also what you would call a deeply religious man. He believed in God, and he believed in the old traditional ways of the church. And I just want to pause there and say that just because someone is religious and comes to church and even uh, has a relation, maybe or uh, not, maybe not a relationship with God, but says they have a relationship with God and does all the right things. Doesn't mean that they're spirit filled and God honoring. Someone that has a strong belief in God would persecute, persecute and kill Christians, those who actually love the Lord. And I want you to think about that today. Not every religious leader, not every religious person, not every person who says that they are in relationship with God is actually spirit-filled. Sometimes the greatest persecution of the church can come from people within the church. Saul was living in darkness, and so God meets him and reveals to him the darkness that he was living by taking his natural sight and actually putting him in darkness. It's not until a spirit-filled believer in the way of Ananias lays hands on him and speaks life that Saul then encounters the Holy Spirit. Saul was filled, and immediately the Bible says something like scales fell from his eyes and he could see again. God takes him from his darkness, spiritually and physically, and places him in the light. God then calls Saul his chosen instrument, and he renames him. He restores him, and he releases him to preach the gospel and make a difference for the kingdom of God. Paul then goes and preaches the gospel, using his lawyer training to provide evidence through the history to the case of Christ. God then takes Saul and puts him in in a spacious place, by removing his sight, only to restore it through the power of his presence. Saul would go on from there and remain in the spacious place of God's presence. Nothing for Saul or for Paul or for the church would ever be the same again. Finally today, we see David coming to the end of his life. David has been through many, many things in his life. We've read about them day after day after day. But after all of that, and at the end of it all, he praises God for rescuing him time after time. Many times David calls out for help and many times God hears his prayer. Look at what David says. He says, God brought him out into a spacious place. When God rescues you, he doesn't want you to stay where you are as you are. He wants you to be faithful, pure, and humble. Listen, whatever you're facing today, I want to encourage you. If it's a horrible home, a bad boss, crying children, or stressful studies, or something else, God gives you the strength to stick with it and find the victory you need. David in his last moments of his life sums up his experience with God and it's all in chapter 23. The headlines are this, God rescues him and anointed him. The spirit of the Lord spoke through him and God's word was on his tongue. My question for you today is, has God rescued you and anointed you? Is the spirit of the Lord speaking through you and is God's word on your tongue? Where have you stopped saying yes on that little list of things I just said? I'd encourage you to get with God and sort it out so that you, can, you too can become one with God and have a testimony of God's goodness in your life, just like David did. Three, two, Verse one. of the day. Verse of the day is 2 Samuel chapter 22, verse 31. It says, as for God, his way is perfect. The Lord's, the Lord's word is flawless. He shields all who take refuge in him. Amen. This is one of my favorite passages of the Bible, this passage in 2 Samuel. So many good truths about God and so many declarations we can declare and speak over us again and again and again. 
one of the things that you could declare today is that God's way is perfect. God's way is perfect. It's not going to be perfect. It's not potentially perfect. It is perfect. It's way more perfect to live a life following God's way than trying to make it up on our own. And that is it for today, day 165, done and dusted. For the last time here in Singapore, thank you so much for joining me on this Bible reading plan every single day. I'm praying for you as always that God would speak to you and reveal more of himself to you. But that is it. We're done in Singapore. We jump on a plane. I head to Brisbane. Annalise heads to New Zealand. Tea week is coming up next week. I've still got a couple of days. Uh, a... <laughs> Three more days. Three more days to go with me. And then we're going to have tea week with Annalise. Thank you so much for joining me here today. I pray a blessing on you. I'm looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. A massive thank you to all of you who have said, uh, said yes to Jesus in your life, but also uh, to those of you who have said yes to following the podcast and uh, rating the podcast. I tried to segue that, but it was a bit, a bit clunky. And to you on YouTube, anyway, this outro is going to take longer than the devotional itself. Thank you so much for joining me. If it's the start of your day, have a great rest of your day. Unless it's sleep time, good night, sleep tight, and we'll see you back here tomorrow. I'll be in Brisbane for a new day of the Daily Brew.